What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and today I'm excited to welcome once again Sean Reynolds, Customer Service Manager at Bullion Max. How you doing, Sean? I'm doing well today. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm really excited because we're talking about how to safely store your precious metals, and this is a topic that everyone needs to be aware of. So uh, first off, Sean, could you tell us Maybe if you have a story or something of someone who did things the wrong way. <laughs> right. Well, I, I came about this really as, as someone who had, a, who had a horrible experience and you couldn't figure out why. And, uh, and so I asked him about a situation uh, and he said, well, I put him in the safe. I don't understand why I would have a problem. They're safe in the safe, right? And I said, well, where's the safe? And he said, well, it's in, a, it's in an outbuilding in my, in my backyard. Well, I had just remembered this guy was from Florida, and I thought, uh-oh, heat and humidity right there. And I said, do you have air conditioning back there? And he said, no. And I thought, oh, my goodness. He, he not knowingly created a humidor, which, as we know, is great for cigars, but horrible for, uh, for precious metals. So toning was off the charts. I don't think I had ever seen, like, one-year-old coins toned like this. So it was almost like he pre-aged them or something like that. <laughs> Some of them were gorgeous rainbow type of stuff, but you know, it's an artifact most people don't want. Right. So uh, it, it makes sense that we should probably talk about it because here's a guy who didn't know. Right. Putting him in the safe is not enough. Got to Got to do a little more. Yeah, exactly. So with gold, uh, it's usually not too much of a problem, right? Because gold, right. you know, it... it it's not reactive. Um, it's uh, it doesn't really ever tone or age. I mean, thousand year old gold still looks beautiful, so it's not mm -hmm. really a problem. But it's the silver Absolutely. that it, when it starts toning, it can even turn black uh, if it tones mm -hmm. enough. So mm -hmm. you really got to be careful. What are some ways that people could uh, sort of protect their silver from the toning? Sure. One of the things that that I do, and this is like super low tech is I, I start with a cool, dry place. So maybe that's a, a, a closet in the interior of my home that has you know pretty regulated temperatures and humidity. Then I like to take, you know, anytime I get a new pair of shoes, I get a new packet of silica gel and I just throw that in. Now, when I see that I'm getting some that have been in there for a while, I don't know if you knew this or not, but you can take those packets of silica gel Put them out in the hot sun for a while, and that will recharge them. That will get rid of the humidity that they have sucked up, and that will make them work again. So very, very low tech. Nothing, I'm not paying for anything extra to do that, but that's how I protect my silver. Keep it in a cool, dry place and use uh, silica gel packets as, as we buy shoes, purses, things that happen to have those things. And then rotate them. Bake them again in the sun to make them fresh, and away you go. Yeah, and I know there are some commercial products you can buy, but like you mentioned, you could just do this for free. And mm -hmm. I actually uh, have the same strategy. And one thing that I do is I'll take some of those storage bins, the plastic ones, you get them from mm -hmm. any of the big box stores or online or whatever. But uh, you put your silver in these bins. You could even use monster boxes are sure. great. You can buy empty monster boxes and stuff like that and throw a few of those packets in there and it'll really keep your silver uh, looking like silver, <laughs> which is kind mm -hmm. of ideal. Yeah. Then I think the next thing is, is you know, of course, it's beautiful and you like to handle it. Um, and we've probably heard ever since we were kids, our parents tell us, hey, you see with your eyes, not your hands. I see with my hands. <laughs> so there's no just looking at it. I, I want to take it out. I want to I want to have a really good look at it. And so from a condition standpoint, we all know the oil from your fingers is not a friend to your silver coins. So so are, uh, let me ask you this. Are you a glove guy? Are you a mitten guy? Are you a, uh, you know, cotton towel guy? What types of things do you do when you're when you're handling your silver? Yeah, you know. I like gloves, um, but I will say this, uh, like like the cotton gloves, that's what I typically use. Yeah. Um, 
you got to be careful if you're handling something with high value because even the cotton gloves, if you're touching the face and you're sort of rubbing it, you can get micro scratches on coins and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can even lower the condition while wearing gloves. But uh, one thing I've learned is that when the uh, companies grade coins, so the professional handlers, ah. they actually hold the coins uh, by the edge. So they don't touch the face of the coin ever. And mm -hmm. so that's one thing you can do. Um, of course, if it's just a bullion round or a bar or something like that, it doesn't really matter so much. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you're buying constitutional silver, you can just hold that in your hand because that stuff's all worn down anyway. Um, right. So it kind of right. depends on the type of silver or, or what you're handling. But uh, I think gloves are a good idea. Uh, just be careful with some of the latex gloves. Uh, mm -hmm. Because even those can can put stuff on your coins. So I would say stick with the cotton stuff. Yep, I, I've used both extensively when uh, we used to put uh, eagles and flips to try to get all those pre-sales out. You know, be all hands on deck. And so um, I like the cotton ones best. But when you're handling at that heavy rate, you can stretch them out pretty quickly. And then they just kind of hang off your hands. Um, I've also used the uh, the neutral, uh, the blue gloves, not latex, but the uh, the more surgical style ones, and those stay on your hands better. But it just feels weird when you're handling it, so it is going to be a personal preference type of thing. Pretty interesting, but well protected and made sure that you didn't have you know my fingerprints on those uh, pieces. Yeah, that is a good point. If you do touch the face of a coin. Uh, with your finger, you will leave a fingerprint on it. And that's a little bit less desirable. So I would say best practice for coins, just always touch the edge. Uh, now, since we're talking about coins, what mm -hmm. do you think about the coin capsules? Because I know people can overdo it, trying to put every eagle or every mm -hmm. round in one of these little capsules. Uh, maybe it's okay for the specialty stuff, but for general bullion, people don't really need to do that, right? No, as a matter of fact, uh, if you're selling back to us, since we don't sell in capsules, we'd have to take it out of the capsule. So we'd we'd rather you take it out of the capsule if you're going to sell it back to us, because otherwise we have labor involved and there's nothing we're going to do with those capsules. So, yeah, you're best off to just keep them in your tubes if you're buying in that quantity um, or or keep them in flips unless they are special things that you otherwise would handle. See, now that, that's where they're helpful is when you really can't keep your mitts off the face, put it in a capsule. That, that's a great purpose for that. Um, but otherwise, no, there's, there's no need to do that. Again, cool, dry place and, uh, and some, some type of uh, desiccant to, to minimize your humidity and your stuff should not tone. All right. Well, yeah, that about sums it up. So I'd say uh, great advice. It was awesome talking with you again, Sean. And uh, we look forward to having you on next time. Sounds great.